Liberty. The Black Sheep Squadron will not be presented tonight so that we may bring you the following special program. Peeping Times, your magazine of the air. One solid hour of investigative reporting about people in the news, behind the news, and underneath the news. Peeping Times. You've served seven years for smuggling illegal aliens. Yes, from all over the world. Hmm. What was the most common method you used to get them into the country? The mail. <laughs> the mail. The strange phenomenon of Bigfoot sometimes called the Yeti, Mamusa, Sasquatch, or the Abominable Snowman. Just exactly, why are you making these phony footprints? Well, I'm helping to keep Bigfoot alive. Uh, why would you want to do that? Well, in our little town of Yule, here, hi, Luke. Billy. <laughs> This is Angelo Ricardo Bertinelli. He is 38 years of age. He is a New York longshoreman, much like any other longshoreman, except for one thing. Angelo wants to become a nun. They call Hollywood Boulevard the street of dreams, the Champs-Élysées, the street of romance, the Veneto, the street of chic mystery. But the street I'm standing on now is known as Slees Street. And it's very likely that there's one just like it in your hometown. <laughs> is that who I think it is? Uh, yes, that's Adolf Hitler in a whole movie. <laughs> I'm Miles Rathborn. I'm Dan Cochran. Arnie Vespuli is on assignment. We'll have these and other stories on Peeping Times right after the following messages. We're at the Thomas Wall. Phoenix, Arizona, to see how people compare the new AMC Concord DL with the latest Volari Sport Coupe. It's got a lot more class than the Volari. Well, I said this would be $800 to $1,000 more, and it should be. $1,100, $1,200 more. The Concord is actually priced less than the Volari. How about that? unbelievable. That's amazing. I didn't even think they build a car like that for that price anymore. Wrap it up. I'll take it home. <laughs> the new AMC Concord DL. The luxury Americans want. The value Americans need. America was founded by immigrants. We are the so-called melting pot of the world. And most of those immigrants entered this nation legally. Today, however, illegal aliens are a great and continuing problem. On this subject, we filed this report. There are 77 checkpoints along the border. This is one of them, the Mexican border. Thousands of illegal aliens come to the United States every year. How do they do it? What precautions are taken? We talked to Border Patrolman James W. Hansen from Checkpoint 54. Officer Hansen, how long have you been patrolling this border? Oh, I'd say 10, 12 years. You enjoy this sort of work? Yes, I do, Dan. Very much. I feel we're doing something important here, and I can honestly say I think we're doing our best. Well, how do you explain so many aliens crossing the border illegally every year? Well, I don't know, Dan. I'm completely dumbfounded. I know that Larry and I do our job very thoroughly here at this checkpoint. Well, there must be various methods that aliens use. What do you do specifically to make sure no one enters illegally? Well, every car is stopped and searched. We check out the trunk, check out the seats. Sometimes they have false seats. Well, that's fine for motor vehicles. What, what about someone crossing the border on foot? Well, uh, that's where uh, Larry comes in. Now, Larry scans that field. If he notices any activity of a suspicious nature or an unnatural nature, why, he comes to me and we take the necessary preventive measures. I can honestly say that we are two men who are doing our job for the United States of America. Thank you. 
with you. Now, you've served seven years for smuggling illegal aliens. Yes, from all over the world. Mm. What was the most common method you used to get them into the country? The mail. <laughs> the mail. Well, let me see if I understand you correctly. You sent illegal aliens through the mail? Well, of course. Parcel post. <laughs> I put an illegal alien in a nice curtain. I seal it up. You can send it anywhere. I mailed at least three dozen to North Dakota. Later that day, Mr. Matthews agreed to show us his technique for shipping immigrants. Now, you say that you actually pack them. Mm -hmm. How? Well, the first thing you do yeah. is to lay your illegal alien on the table. Like this. Then you get some of these papers. And you put them in the armpits, like this. Okay? Then you fold the arms close to the chest, as you would a suit. Then you lift the legs, like this and fold the knees in half, like that, making sure the elbows are tucked in carefully. I see, doesn't that hurt? No. Okay, then what do you do? Well, then you take the box, like this, <laughs> and you place your illegal alien into, into the box. <laughs> Okay, using lots of paper to cushion whatever folds he may have. Yes, I can see that. You know? yeah, this is incredible. It's absolutely unbelievable. You okay? Okay. Right. Of course, I haven't taken the time. But ordinarily, I would make some air holes on the side. Oh, yes. And put some sausage and medicine there for him. Well, there you have it. In a future program, we're going to be taking a look at another kind of alien, not simply those who come here from other countries, but people who enter the United States from other planets. Yes, space creatures who work on our farms and in our factories, taking away jobs from real Americans. And now we come to a portion of our show that deals with a strange phenomenon. It stood seven or eight feet tall. Its eyes were like coal, staring, never seeming to close. It was covered with hair, and the odor was frightful. We were transfixed with fear. The beginning of a gothic horror story? No, something even stranger. A description of Bigfoot. The strange phenomenon of Bigfoot sometimes called the Yeti, Mamusa, Sasquatch, or the Abominable Snowman. <laughs> Just exactly, why are you making these phony footprints? Well, I'm helping to keep Bigfoot alive. Uh, why would you want to do that? Well, in our little town of Yule, here, hi, Luke. Really? Uh, in our little town of Yule here in the state of Washington, you know, we all work together to keep Bigfoot alive. Well, then there's... So there's actually two of you doing this, then? Oh, uh, no, me and Luke just do this on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'd say there's uh, now on about 10 or 12 of us that uh, run these trails. Why would so many people be involved in perpetuating the Bigfoot myth? <laughs> tourist trade. The town of Ewell is a legitimate tourist trap. Bigfoot means money. Mayor Boyle, are you also involved in this obvious fraud? Well, I, I think that uh, fraud is a rather strong word, but... Um... But yes. See, I personally am in charge of placing little pieces of hair on the bushes. People come across that, they get real excited. Uh, my deputy, uh, my deputy there, he's in charge of the fake doo-doo. Uh, uh, Billy Joe, Billy Joe, come here. The man wants to talk to you. He's a little shy. Sure. My deputy. Howdy. How do you do? I understand you're in charge of doo-doo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I spread about 17 pounds a day out there on the trails. 
Mayor, uh, aren't you willfully deceiving the public with this? Oh, no, not at all. Bigfoot really does exist. We're, we're just helping keeping it alive, uh, just like uh, advertising. Huh? Well, gentlemen, the rhetoric is certainly well rehearsed, but isn't it true, after all, that there is not one single bit of tangible proof? Well, Clyde's got him on film, right, hey, Mayor? Clyde Porter's got him on film. Uh-huh. Oh, you're gonna love this. That's saying we got pictures of Bigfoot here. Hi, how are you? Me and Mildred, we was up in the mountains. You know, Mildred's my old lady. And we was up hiking, and we broke through this underbrush, and there's this huge hairy thing standing. I mean, it's big. First, I thought, that's a bear. I said, Mildred, look at that bear. Get me the camera. And she threw me my camera. I commenced to looking at it, and I said, that ain't no bear. That's Bigfoot. And I grabbed my camera and started to film him, and he took off running. I mean, these things are fast. You wouldn't believe it. And I run after him. I don't think they like having their pictures took. Let's see the film. You're not afraid of big I things. would like to see the film. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. Here. I smell something funny, Clyde. Oh, right over in that area? I smell something. Yeah! Ah! It's big one! Look at the size of it! Get out of my way, Mildred. I'm coming through here. Get out of my way. Dang Look it! Look out there. Oh! oh. I saw us two people running away, then I saw a couple of real phony, hairy-looking feet. Somebody just glopped on some fake fur. But you know what kind of gave it away, Clyde? What was hard for me to uh, fathom? One of the feet had an ankle bracelet on it. I mean, that thing is, uh, I seen that. You yeah. know, I think these Bigfoots must be like they're vain creatures, you know? But you saw it, didn't you? I mean, you seen that thing run through there, didn't you? Boy, as big as a mountain. <laughs> I didn't see a thing. Let me run it for you again here. <laughs> Okay, first the good news. There's a delicious cereal for adults called CW Post. Now the bad news. Adults may never get to taste it because the kids can't wait to dip into that oats, brown sugar, rice, wheat, almonds, coconut, and honey. Kids may not know CW Post family-style cereal is natural, vitamin-fortified, and good for them. They just like the taste so much. Maybe they like it too much. CW Post, the grown-up cereal with a taste kids can't resist. Up, Pop. You got a lot of plays to call today. Listen, son, with this cold, I'll be blowing my nose more than this whistle. Take daycare, Pop. It's strong medicine. Daycare. Daycare from Vic helps your stuffy nose. <laughs> Coughing. <coughs> aches and pains for hours and won't make you drowsy. Hey, son. Daycare really works. <laughs> Smart kid. Let daycare take on your cold. It's strong medicine. We're testing some coffee drinkers to see if they can tell cream from coffee mate. Mrs. McClure, can you tell which cup of coffee has cream and which has coffee mate non-dairy creamer? I grew up on a farm in Ireland. I think I know real cream and I taste it. Wrong. It's coffee mate from coffee. Ah! I really thought it was cream. Almost half the coffee drinkers we test think coffee with coffee mate is coffee with cream. Can you taste the difference between coffee mate and cream? Try it. Crime in America, a growing problem. Everybody is complaining, but what is being done about it? There are those who say too much police time is being spent on victimless crime, crimes that do not affect another individual. Excuse me, officer. Excuse me, officer. Why is this woman being brought in? No comment. Ma'am, why are you being arrested? I removed the tag from my couch. What? Another one that says, do not remove under penalty of law. Excuse me, is this true? I said no comment. It was just sticking out from the couch. It was in the way. It was stupid. It, it didn't match anything. 
If you think this is just one isolated case, you are in for a shock. How long have you been in here? Uh, for about a year now. Yeah. What was your original sentence? Uh, two to five years for taping a baseball game without the express written consent of the commissioner. I got one of those videotape machines, you know, and they said you could tape anything. So, uh, I taped the game and then I went out dancing. And when I got home uh, and replayed it, they arrested me. How can you put a man in jail for just taping a baseball game? Without the express consent of the commissioner. <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Ryan. That must seem absurd to even you. The man broke the law. He must be punished. There was no harm done. No one got hurt. Why? Look, it's very simple. The commissioner has said no one is to tape a ball game without his consent. Now, if he had written a letter asking permission, the commissioner probably would have said, okay, go ahead. But he didn't do that. He defied the law. Now, just exactly what happened? I'm a waiter over at Shammy's restaurant. I go to the bathroom there, you know, and, and there's always that sign that says state requires employees must wash their hands before leaving. So I left without washing my hands, and, and then right away I was busted. And I mean, I didn't even do anything in that bathroom. Why should I wash my hands? I, I just went in so I could look at myself in the mirror. And then, and then when they busted me, they, they, they handcuffed me with my hands behind my back, and, then, and, then, and then I wanted to wash my hands, and I couldn't because they were behind my Let me get this straight. As the district attorney, you felt it was necessary to put a man in prison simply because he did not wash his hands. The law, my friend, is the law. You know what he's in for? He caught an undersized halibut, and he didn't throw it back. <laughs> He ate it. <laughs> More than half of all convicts released from prison commit crimes again. If the crime rate is to be reduced, there must be a strong and valid form of prison rehabilitation. This is Gibson, Louisiana, a maximum security prison. Some of the toughest criminals in the nation are confined here. So as you uh, see, Mr. Rathborn, penology today has to concern itself with a wide variety... Let's just go around them, shall we? <laughs> so that we, uh... That wasn't inconvenient, oh, was no, it? No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> right this way, Mr. Rathborn. Now, as you can see, we do things a bit differently here, hmm? Things are a little hectic. We're getting ready for the big show. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do you consider this a form of rehabilitation? Oh, most definitely. We have 100% attendance at every casting call. <laughs> you see that, uh... How does this help? Hmm? I say, how does it help? Well, uh, it's a form of learning process for the men. For example, for one thing, they make all their own costumes, they build the scenery. <laughs> see the fellow there, the charming fellow with the beard and the brown leotards. Now, he does most of the choreography. I see. Well, it... How long has this program been in operation? The end of our first season. <laughs> Are there any statistics to prove its success? Well, yes and no. You see, we've been basing our evaluation on the success of the program primarily on the reviews. You get reviewed? Oh, yes, in the prison paper. <laughs> I'll tell you, that fella is brutal. Mm. Matter of fact, we keep him in solitary confinement for his own protection until the night of the show. And then right afterwards, back he goes. Yeah, I can understand that. How you guys doing? Good. I'll try to do this. Come on over here. Send it right in here. I'll show it to you. Eight bars are very simple, okay? And now it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Turn, 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 and pull. You got that? Go. Okay, good. Let's try and go with it, okay? All right? Five, six, seven, eight, and...
Pornography breed crime. It's a controversial subject, and we took a look at it. They call Hollywood Boulevard the street of dreams, the Champs-Élysées, the street of romance, the Via Veneto, the street of chic mystery. But the street I'm standing on now is known as Sleaze Street. And it's very likely that there's one just like it in your hometown. This is one of the pornography shops that gives this street the reputation it has. The customers in the store at the time refused to be photographed unless they were allowed to wear masks. We complied with their request, and on short notice, our crew obliged them with what was available. Hello. 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 Are you the owner? Uh, no, no, I just, uh, I just manage the place. I see. Uh, well, where's the owner? He, uh, <coughs> he lives in Bermuda. I, uh, I, I've never seen him. You've been working here long? Yeah, well, I've been working here about uh, five years off and on. Oh, I see. Wasn't this place closed down recently? Oh, yeah, well, that happens all the time, you know. It's, uh, cops come in with a warrant and they mm -hmm. seize the place, they confiscate the films, and mm -hmm. the, the cops turn the films over to the judge and he keeps them for about a month or so and makes a ruling <laughs> and uh, goes back and forth like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, this is the book and magazine section, mm -hmm. all in through here. These, uh, these just came in from Haiti. Oh? Yeah. Let me see. Oh. Hmm. You. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what happens to all the spaghetti when they're finished? <laughs> uh, is that a real pumpkin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Excuse me, friend. Oh. Yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. Nice uh, now, how would you like to take a look at the uh, device department? Oh, yes. Yes, I would. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Right in here. Uh, watch your head over here. Right. Now, uh, uh... What is this here? What is this? Well, this uh, is an electric spatula, with or without the clothespins. This is uh, a very popular item. It's used by both men and women alike. Uh -huh. And uh, these are imported, you know, from Lima, Peru. Lima, Peru. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. A grinder, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. What would you put in a grinder? <laughs> uh, well... Certain items couldn't be photographed for obvious reasons, so we shielded them with black cardboard. Oh, is this, uh, this made of raisins? Yes, it is. This is uh, for the organic deviates. Mm -hmm. wow. Is that hand carved? Yeah, completely mm -hmm. hand carved. Oh, my goodness. Take a look over here. Yeah. See the, uh, the oh, detail that went into this? Yes, year? that's quite yeah, beautiful. It's our best selling item so far. Yeah, got to have a steady hand to do that kind of work. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's terrific. <laughs> and, uh, well, what's that right there? It's, uh, this is uh, leather pants with yeah. uh, straws at the knees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's on me. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like this? So, what is the correlation between pornography and crime? Do dirty books, filthy devices, sexual apparati, cause someone to go out of the house and commit a crime? I'll let you know. <laughs> In 
In our efforts to uncover crime as it invades America, we have come across one man who has the courage to stand up and be counted. He has bravely come forward to expose an illegal drug syndicate. For his own safety and the protection of his family, his face will be photographed in the shadows. We will not divulge his name or where he now lives. We will call him Mr. X. First of all, just let me say that you have my utmost respect and I'm sure the admiration of America. Mr. X, what made you come forward? Well, there comes a time when every fellow man has a responsibility to his community. You know what I mean? And the drug situation has gotten too much out of hand. Now, you haven't been paid to squeal on your former partners in crime, have you? Of course not. Listen, if I received money, would I be living in a crummy dump over a bowling alley on 13th Street? Huh? No, I suppose not. Um, I understand, though, that except for you and your immediate family, no one knows about this. Well, my boss down at work knows, but he doesn't treat me any different. Hector, he says, you do your job, you get your pay. But, Mr. X, aren't you worried that your former associates will somehow determine where you're now living and cause problems for you and your family? No. Where are they going to start looking? And my wife, Jeannie. She's not going to say anything. You understand? Jeannie. Uh, Mr. X, is there any additional information that you have for us now that you haven't already given to the DA's office? Yeah. I got big names for you. A lot of names, and I'm not afraid to tell them to you. There's John D. Ben Housen, Pete McGreedy, Eddie McPherson, Chichi Giovanoni. This could be a problem, couldn't it? And Debbie Ann Ross. You want any more? No, I think you pretty much said it all. As a postscript to this story, Mr. X is missing. <laughs> The smile on your face is there because you know that your mouth tastes great. And you know that your breath is fresh because the clean in your mouth is Colgate. Colgate's zingy taste makes your mouth feel alive. And Colgate's MFP fluoride is unbeaten for fighting cavities. Fresh mouth and fluoride. That's Colgate. There's a twinkle in your eye and a smile on your face. And the clean in your mouth is Colgate. Wonder how Charlie's gonna undo it this year. It's the same thing, only different. Undo it. It's a fresher kind of style. Undo it. The seven up. A more natural way of doing things. Undo it. That naturally brings a smile. To undo it is to do it big, because the Uncola taste handles it all. Well done. And undone. Yeah, the only way to do it is undo it. Seven up. Peeping times will continue after station identification. Arnie Vespuli will still be on assignment. <laughs> when Laura finds an abandoned baby, she decides she's called to motherhood on Little House on the Prairie. Then the trickiest Columbo movie ever. Poison. I ate the same meal. Delicious. Murder under glass. First Little House on the Prairie, then Columbo. Monday starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain Time on NBC. Ford introduces Futura, a new car designed for 1978 and beyond. Futura's striking design is the result of computer modeling and aerodynamic testing. Its ride is the result of a newly created advanced front suspension system. Futura, designed for 1978 and beyond. Realistically priced for today. See your Southern California Ford dealer for his price. Joe Namath talks about his decision to retire in the news at 11 on 4. Medical care costs are skyrocketing. Congress keeps talking about lowering the costs of medical care, but they're still talking. All of this brings us to Scottsdale, Arizona, where a progressive young doctor is attempting to do something about all of this. He started the first self-service hospital. Look, let's face it. There are plenty of routine medical functions that a patient can perform for himself. So why should he have to pay through the nose to some individual who thinks he's high and mighty just because he went to medical school for eight years? It's absurd. The medical profession has been ripping people off for too long. 
So it isn't the idea of a self-service hospital dangerous, though? Uh, people running around giving themselves examinations and then performing their own surgery? No more dangerous than an ordinary hospital. We have taken great care to supply the patients with the proper equipment, and we have clear, easy-to-understand instructions. Now, people aren't dumb. <laughs> No, if this works out, we may franchise it like McDonald's, sort of hospital under the golden arches, you know, five billion cured, six billion cured. Did you go to a medical school? Uh, several. Drop the scalpels on the floor. <laughs> Our cameras took a random tour of the self-service hospital in Scottsdale and found it full of patients healing themselves. Attention all patients. For the next hour, neck braces are on sale. Let's take this over in the light. Come on. Yeah, the light. What's this? So many glasses. <laughs> What to look for in x-rays. Eh, yeah, it's too complicated. I swear that's a tumor, Ralph. Tumor? What else could it be? Don't worry. I'll do an exploratory. It'll take me ten minutes. Oh, Alvin, stop moving, honey. It's only going to hurt more. Oh, oh. What kind of a man are you, Alvin? I'm almost through here. Oh. Oh. There. Now. Ah, uh, what step are we on here? Five or six? Six? Huh? You already uh, did five. Oh, don't do five again. Oh, step number six is in Spanish. Well, we'll skip to eight, okay? That looks interesting. You don't want to listen to that. I wouldn't do this if I didn't love you, Alvin. Uh, Dr. Burnett, do these people know what they're doing? Sure they do. Let's go have a cup of coffee. Something's wrong. This lady isn't healing. Well, get another opinion. Ask your son-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Self-service is going to work. Uh, the only problem is uh, malpractice. People are continually suing themselves and making money at it. Bill a patient in bed 54. Please return to the operating room. You left something behind. If, in fact, we are what we eat, then what should we eat? Nutritionists, doctors, researchers seem to have various opinions. Over a several-month period, we talked with a number of these experts, and what they had to say was startling. There just isn't enough fat in our diet. Fat's good for us. We need fat. But isn't that contrary to what general opinion seems to be? Doesn't a high level of fat intake contribute to cholesterol? Not at all. We're falsely led to believe that. After all, the brain is 90% fat. <laughs> Gotta replenish the fat up here. <laughs> Did you ever hear the term, fathead? <laughs> we should eliminate fat from our diet completely. I mean, the Americans just consume too much fat. Should I order steaks with lots of fat? Eggs fried in grease? Loads of bacon? Chicken fat is very good. Better yet, lard. No, no, definitely no roughage. Hmm? What's wrong? You're waking up in the morning, you're eating one of your house plants. Trollodendron and milk, chiflera, wandering Jew, whatever. They're all very hearty. Vegetables can kill you. With all of that DDT and insecticide in it. Hedges, very good source of vitamin C. Your neighbors, hedges, preferably. Glass of olive oil. <laughs> Makes a very refreshing beverage. Tumbleweed is a very, very good source of nutrition. Of course, you have to chase it, but then you get uh, very good exercise. A production that I myself devised, which consists primarily of sweeping compound and reconstituted newsprint hmm. in an oil base. To add to the confusion of what is and what is not harmful to you, here at the Cartel Research Lab, startling evidence is beginning to emerge. 
Now then, uh, let me show you just what I've been talking about. All right. I understand you've been testing foods on some mice. Oh, yes, ah. yes, quite. Mm -hmm. Now, Pepe here is on a refried beans and burrito diet. <laughs> However, he's not doing too well. Oh. Ah, but Chen over here is on a straight diet of mushu pork, shrimp in lobster sauce, and a sub gun chicken. <laughs> I suppose you have to feed him every hour. Precisely. <laughs> and this one over here, we serve nothing but soul food. Understand that? Ah, now, here we have the Shapiro family. Oh, yes. Oh, they're on a diet, a strict diet, of Reuben sandwiches and fried matzo. <laughs> However, as you can see, they're not doing too well. Perhaps it's because we added the halava. Oh, you mean halava? Yes, as you wish. <laughs> well, since uh, none of these mice seem to be doing very well, what is your conclusion? That all foods cause cancer. You mean to tell me that all foods cause cancer? Oh, yes, indeed. I'm beginning to have doubts about oxygen. Thank you. Mrs. Smith's natural juice pie is full of luscious fruit and topped with the flakiest crust ever. Mrs. Smith's pie comes frozen, and you bake it into the most beautiful homestyle pie you ever tasted. Mrs. Smith's... You great big beautiful pie. The wedding's off! Oh, I invited 300 people? Remember those times when everything depended on a phone call? 95. Chances are the phone you depended on was made by Weston Electric. To Today, Western Electric still makes every telephone the same way, with Western Electric reliability, just like always. 300. The wedding's on! <laughs> For 95 years, America's depended on Bell telephones made by Western Electric. Oh, I can do it better than you can. You can try. This is Polaroid's one step. You just press the button and the picture comes out. That's it? Yeah. Nothing about the motor? Nope. You never focus, you skip that. Why talk about what you don't do? And the sharp, clear SX-70 color develops in minutes. Nice, huh? Obvious and obvious. Well, you can't just say you press the button and the picture comes out. It's the world's simplest camera. Feeling threatened? Get the one step. Disney's most hilarious movie, The Shaggy Dog. Th that shaggy dog just stole my car! Sometimes you'll be a dog and sometimes you'll be a boy. Fred McMurray stars in The Shaggy Dog. Then the Golden Globe Awards, Charles Bronson and Jill Ireland host. And presenting awards are Farrah Fawcett Majors, Henry Winkler, Lee Majors, Mark Hamill of Star Wars, Cheryl Ladd, Natalie Wood, Glenn Ford, and more. The Shaggy Dog, then the Golden Globe Awards, Sunday starting at 7, 6 Central. We've come to a section of our program that we call Rare Film Footage, where we show you film clips never seen before. This is Bernard Mantee, our rare film footage collector. What have you got for us today, Bernard? Well, I've acquired some home movies that I think will astound you and your audience. This film was shot in the mid-1930s. And now, of course, Miles, the quality leaves something to be desired as it was shot over 40 years ago. What's the subject matter, Bernard? Let's take a look at it and you can see for yourself. All right. Wait a second while it gets up to speed. Okay, roll them. Is that who I think it is? Uh, yes, that's Adolf Hitler in a home movie. It's not like Mel Brooks. Who's taking the picture? 
Oh, uh, Ava. Ava Braun. And uh, not too many people know it, but he was a secret admirer of Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> now, now, this is extremely rare footage. Uh, it's with sound. Well, I see Eva there. Who's running the camera this time? Ruth Hess. <laughs> Hello, Shakti. Kiss machen, bitte. Danke. <laughs> ah, so. Ah. Wir essen machen? Oh. Ja. Ja. Was ist das, Schatzi? Applesauce. Applesauce. Applesauce ah. besser machen, bitte. Ah. Danke. <lacht> Danke. Bitte. Was ist das? Was ist das? There's something in here. Nothing. Oh, there's a spice in here. Don't tell me nothing. There's something in here. Oregano. It's not oregano. Parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme. Oh. Just a little cinnamon. Cinnamon. That's what it is. Cinnamon. You try to get Simonin past my schmecker? <laughs> Never. What did you do? It was a bug. A bug. You killed a bug. A bug. A living thing you just take its life away. <laughs> Boom, my sister's over. Boom. It was here for some reason. You just don't kill things. What's the matter with you? Forget about the bug, Addy. Why don't you ask the mashed potatoes? Why don't you ask the bug's family to forget about it? Please, you have some mashed potatoes. You know it always makes you feel better. I don't want mashed potatoes. Oh, come on, Eddie. I don't want mashed potatoes. You always love your mashed potatoes. Yeah. Come on, Eddie. Come yeah. on. Open, yeah. open yeah. for yeah. Evie. Yeah. Yeah. Open. Oh, <laughs> 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 What the heck is that? What the heck is that? Someone's taking pictures? Why is there pictures here? I told you when we're eating, we're eating. We save the film for the gags. Later, we're having fun with Marty Borman in the cellar. Then we're eating. we're eating. Disgusting. Rudy, Rudy, you're wrong. You only have half of me. I can see in the glasses, only have half of me. Look, I'm going to do my famous hire, and you're not, you're not going to get my arm in. Hire me, hire me, hire me, hire me. I'm not in just this part. Look, I, I got to get myself a close-up. Since we're taking pictures, I, I should get something cuter than that. All right, now, we're going to go for a big fade right into my mustache. Just the way they would do in a real modern picture. Here comes the mustache. Here is the face. Slow face. Slow face. Religion is continually changing. In what ways? Let's have a look. Never happening. <laughs> Next time. Next time, sure. Yeah, this right. is Angelo Ricardo Bertinelli. He is 38 years of age. He is a New York longshoreman, much like any other longshoreman, except for one thing. Angelo wants to become a nun. <laughs> now, Angelo, really, why do you want to become a nun? Well, first off, I gotta admit, it started off as a bet one of the guys here down at the bar, you know? Uh, I was uh, a little drinking, you know, and I... Uh, Had a little too much to drink one night, something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say yeah. that. Uh, and uh, so what happened was that I was angry, okay? I was really angry at this woman at my church had become a priest. I mean, come on. That's spinning in the eye of everything I ever believed in. So I figured if a woman become a priest, I could become a nun, yeah. okay? And one of the guys bet I couldn't. So the whole thing actually just sort of started as a prank or a joke or just kind of a bar bet with the guys here? Huh? Well, slow down, I bet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the way it started out. But then I looked into the good work that the nuns do, and I realized right then and there that this was my true calling. I was born to be a nun. What about a priest? I, I, 
I'd get nervous in front of crowds, you know? I mean, I would, I'd rather work behind the scenes, you know what I mean? So then, you, have you applied to a convent? Oh, yeah, oh, sure. They, they turned me down flat cold. They won't let me in. Well, of course, we love Angelo dearly, but unfortunately, he's unqualified. Because he is a man. Oh, no, that's discrimination. We're not allowed to discriminate. Well, then, just exactly why is Angelo Bertinelli being prevented from entering your convent? He's too big. He's too big. Yes, yes sir, he's six feet two inches tall. Now, let's be honest, isn't this just a technicality to keep Mr. Bertinelli and others like him out? And when I say others like him, of course, I mean men. No, sir, it is not a technicality. It is written right here in the bylaws of this order. Um, here it is. Chapter 16, paragraph 11, subsection 3 of the bylaws, revised March 11, 1216 A.D. Ye none may not extend it in height beyond six feet. You know, I don't know if this in height beyond six feet means wearing heels or not. We don't wear heels. We only wear them after lights out. Uh, who's she kid? It's obviously a whitewash job. We do have a nun who is six feet, but she spends most of her time in chapel. She is not... We deal with uniformity, do you know? That's why we dress like, um... They say we dress like penguins, but it's not... We don't take her on field trips. So you do have a nun who is six feet tall, in fact. A direct contradiction of what you just read. She is six feet, may not extend beyond six feet, it says. Don't you think we're splitting hairs now, Mother Superior? We don't have. We are. Uh, we can't split hairs. All right. But don't you feel that in other walks of life? Would you like some crumb cake? Would your crew like some fruit? Well, perhaps would you like some fruit? Like, no. uh, don't you feel that in all walks butter of life? Butter cookie? Would you like a butter no. cookie? Does anyone here care for a butter cookie? <laughs> would you like one? Thank you. Oh. Now. I took the big one. <laughs> Hey, no way they're going to stop me. I want to be a nun. There's a lot of nun in me, and I'm going to go all the way with it. I intend to fight this all the way up to the Supreme Court. And I'll tell you something else. If that don't work, I'm going to take the next step right to the Pope. <laughs> he did take his case to court and won. Angelo Ricardo Bertinelli is now Sister Angelo Ricardo As religion continues to change, so does its attire. We talked to Mr. Leonard, the designer of Leisure Frocks, about his upcoming spring line. I received hundreds of letters from ministers asking, what about denim? <laughs> well, I'm happy to say that this is what the well-dressed minister will be wearing this spring. <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> you see, the trousers are flared. They do come in straight leg or boot cut, if you're into that sort of thing. The Western stitching is optional. Very interesting. Oh, thank you. We have a wonderful new line for the exotic Eastern religions, like Hare Krishna. If you're out for a hard day's chanting, this outfit is a must. I wanted to do the whole thing in magenta, but they limited us to saffron. Saffron is nice. This next one is my absolute favorite. <laughs> They're wearing the traditional headdress, but with culottes. Culottes are in for today's nun. Now let me show you what the well-dressed rabbi will be wearing this spring. <laughs> Notice the tops. It's a madras print that coordinates perfectly with the Bermuda shorts. And it matches the yarmulke, too. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's wonderful yes. for you to see that. Now, notice also, no socks with the logos. Heaven. Yeah, well, it certainly is more comfortable looking than the heavy black coats of uh, bygone days. Passé, passé. Well, Mr. Leonard, I mean, these, these designs are all very interesting and beautiful, but tell me, do you think that you'll be able to sell these to the various religious communities? <laughs> God be willing. <laughs>
In an effort to keep up with the times, a small order of brothers in Sables, New Jersey, has hired a Hollywood producer to put a little pizzazz into their Gregorian chanting. <laughs> Mr. Cohen, what exactly have you been doing? Well, Dan, we've been working on this project for about three weeks, diligently. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to love it. Yes. Now, let me see if I understand you correctly, Mr. Cohen. Uh -huh. You want me to bow as you said and then say amen? Or do you want me to say amen first, leave, and then come back and bow? Uh, uh, I would say, I would say, I would say amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Delight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. No. oh, oh. see you next Sunday. Neil, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. They're going to come back begging for more. Now, listen, just for Danny, right? Let's hear that first number again with the rest of the guys, or the fellows, the boys, the brothers, the monks, whatever. <laughs> come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. You're going to love this. You're going to love it. <laughs> Look at those outfits. Huh? 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 Simple. Wonderful. Well, they've been using them for years. Why change, right? Right? Ready when you are, guys. Can I have some coffee? Can you have coffee in church? <laughs> As a final note, there was a story we were going to cover, an old get-rich scheme that's been going on for years. But as we looked into it, we came across some startling facts. How many times have you seen this? Draw me. If you can draw this profile, you can make a lot of money as an artist. Get a high school diploma. Learn to drive a tractor trailer and make money in your spare time. Become an accountant. Delve into orthopedic surgery. We interviewed a man who subscribed to the Draw Me Matchbook cover and found that today he is a successful artist, making two and one half million dollars annually. And we looked into another gentleman who wanted to be a truck driver and filled out a matchbook cover. Today he does not drive trucks. He owns a fleet of semis. Annual income? Three million dollars. And the success stories go on and on and on. What shocked us most was one person who went to Matchbook Cover Broadcasting School. After thorough investigation, we found him to be the producer of our show. <laughs> Conclusion, Matchbook Cover's work. So, take your pick. Four years of college, or fill out a Matchbook Cover. Well, that's it for tonight. This is Miles Rathborn. And I'm Dan Cochran. The next time you see us, Arnie Vespuli will still be on assignment. This is Tom Brokaw. Tomorrow on Today, we'll bring you the first live television broadcast from the underground headquarters of SAC in Omaha, Nebraska. Tomorrow on Today.
special guest appearance by Mel Brooks playing Adolf Hitler, or vice versa.